Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy Seminars. On the first Friday of every month, the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy runs a seminar for therapists and counsellors. The following presentation is from a seminar entitled The Interface Between Neurobiology and Psychotherapy, presented by Stephanie Cook. Stephanie Cook and I'm a trainer and a psychotherapist and I work here at the Institute and I have been working here since 1996 uh, but my background is in childcare. I was a, a social worker for many years and then became a social work manager um, and worked in all areas of childcare, fostering and adoption and uh, young offenders. Um, uh, and children with disabilities. But um, I became interested in transactional analysis when I worked in a CAMS unit. I was also attached to a CAMS unit for many years. Um, I met somebody who was um, uh, um, TA trained, who came and did some workshops. Um, and I thought, wow, this is really good. This really works. So I applied it to my work uh, with the families that I worked with and found it really useful and uh, it worked. Um, so I became interested in training as a psychotherapist so that's how I came into TA um, uh, and eventually became qualified. Um, I have a practice here and I work with adults and children and adolescents and their families but I'm also a trainer and have been training here for some years. Um, and one of my interests over the years has been um, uh, brain development because uh, uh, in working with children in the CAMS unit, some of them had uh, some um, brain injuries, some of them had some difficulties in, in learning. Um, so I've always kind of been interested in that area. Um, uh, and more so recently, because it's a very current topic, as you know, it's become the thing that people are very interested in. I mean, I, I'm interested in it in terms of um, how much our brains are impacted by the way that we're nurtured and the way that we're cared for. And I think that brain development um, is hugely impacted by that. Our brains really only develop if we can attach and we can learn from that attachment how we need to be in society which fires off the neurons in the brain and develops our memories. Um, our brains are developed, 90% developed by the time we're five. So if you can think about our brains as being like um, a circuit board uh, and it's a, a system that's kind of like a wiring system for taking messages into our brain to different parts of our brain. Um, that uh, allow us to learn about how to self-regulate, um, how to be emotional um, and uh, how to be the people that we are that we grow up to be. Um, so I was very, I was more interested in that aspect uh, more than what every single little bit of the brain does um, and I'm interested in what uh, the things that occur to stop brain development um, so, first of all, I, I would quite like, though, to mention um, a little bit about the historical um, interest in brains. Because I, I think we have to give some credit to history, the his, historical psycho psychologists and psychiatrists. And, of course, the, one of the first people to be really interested in the brain is Freud, funnily enough, in the in the <coughs> Uh, late 1800s um, and he started to become curious about the brain um, at the young age of 29 years would you believe he was only 29 when he got interested isn't that amazing because he won a fellowship to study at the Salpetier hospital under the tutorship of professor John Martin Charcot who at that time was an expert in the, both the mind and the brain. Um, then there was great interest in using hypnosis 
to control the subconscious mind. It was probably the major way that they used, the uh, major technique that they used. They used hypnosis. Um, and while Freud studied under Charcot, um, he uh, became to believe that hidden uh, mental processes do indeed um, exert powerful effects on the consciousness. Uh, and that people who are mentally ill were not malingering or faking it. Because that's what people used to think about people with mental, mental health. And I think there's still something of that stigma around today because it's not something you can see. It's not something that you can obviously uh, visually see about somebody. Um, and what he came to realise was that um, due to the power of the unconscious mind, embedded in the uh, uh, neural structures of the brain. Um, he then went on to expand Charcot's thinking uh, and he became, he became to believe that the hysterical patient suffered from unconscious emotional after effects of repressed childhood memories. Which is interesting, isn't it? So what he was linking it to, what went on in the mind, was to do with what happened historically that impacted the mind. Um, so in 1968 he actually wrote an unpublished article about this uh, and how what we witness of conscious and unconscious behaviour is organised and stored within the brain's neural architecture. But he didn't get it published. In fact, he shied away from that a little bit um, and of course later on he became um, admonished because he started to talk about children having sexual experiences so he kind of gave himself a bit of a bad name. So if you are interested in attending any of these fascinating seminars please click the link below this video presentation.